Hello, my beautiful people. My name is Sabrina Scott, and I am here to welcome you to my podcast, The Secrets of a Witch Podcast, where I talk all about life, love, healing, spirituality, witchcraft, tarot, I don't know, all the stuff, (laughs) everything in between, all the things. And my co-host, Awaz, says hello, as always. Anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful full moon, which just passed on Tuesday. I hope you guys are enjoying your week. If you are in the Northern Hemisphere like me, I hope you are enjoying your summer. And I guess it must be winter for the rest of y'all. So whatever time it is, I hope you are having a good one. And for today's episode... I wanted, this is just going to be like a short and sweet one, but this just popped in my head and I wanted to share these reflections with you. And you guys who have known me for a long time will know that I always walk my talk. And so I do tend to coach people on abundance mindset, on trust, on like believing that what you want And what you desire in your heart and soul and mind and all of that is out there that it's possible. If you're looking for love, if you're looking for your soulmate, if you're looking for whatever, that person that would be the perfect fit for you is out there. And just use this as an example, right? Because I think it's an easy to relate to example. I think a lot of times people will date someone where it's like not what they want, you know, like they're not happy. It's like 80% of the way there, 85% of the way there, but ultimately like they're just, they're not happy. Like there's something that is missing. The communication is shit. They're not getting their emotional needs met. Uh, In my case, what's most important to me is feeling heard. Like, if I feel like I've got to repeat myself a million times and this person just, like, doesn't fully, like, pay attention or understand what I'm trying to communicate, that, for me, is the easiest way for me to feel alone in a connection and the biggest reason that I've stepped away from things. But oftentimes, people, and this was me in the past, right? Like, it's so interesting that people often will, will stay despite all this stuff, Right? Um, so not to get all psychoanalytical, but I just, I will use myself as an example so that hopefully you guys can see some of these patterns within yourself. So I've talked about this on the podcast before the concept of core wound, right? And so this is a really early episode. It might be episode like 10 or something. I can't remember. It's, it's early. So like scroll back and listen to it if you haven't already. I talk about this concept of core wound, which I kind of made up, but I feel like therapists must have their own uh, way of understanding what this is. Um, and so for me, it's always been not feeling heard, right? So I could get into like why this is, but like the TLDR from my upbringing is my parents never actually heard me. And so my needs were never met. Like there's lots of reasons for that, but I would communicate, I would cry, I would express, I would explain, I would, explain what I'm feeling, how I'm feeling and why and how I wanted to feel different and how people could behave differently to help me like feel understood and blah, 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 blah. And I felt like a broken record. And in my childhood, I was a broken record. And what I've had to accept in adulthood is no matter how many times I explain it, it will not happen uh, with them, which is fine. And accepting that gives me a lot of peace. I think there's a lot of hope in, uh, becoming hopeless hopefully that makes sense maybe it's another episode for for me to explain this concept but what was so interesting is that once I started to become a bit more self-aware and have more insight into my own behavior that's my other baby hello Troya um I noticed that when I was younger I was gravitating towards partners that actually kind of forced me to reenact that core wound like I gravitated towards partners who made me feel unheard and unseen. 
So I would always have to explain again and again and again and again, and it still wouldn't change anything. And so this is a kind of repetition compulsion type of thing, right? And so we, a lot of us do this, but we don't, are not aware that we're doing this. It's often this like subconscious behavior, like where we'll end up with people who are very much like our parents or who are an echo of our parents. And so then we also become an echo of that wounded child again and again and again. And it never resolves. And so I see a lot of people do this without realizing it. It's like the negative relationships in their life often are an echo of the negative relationships in their childhood. And so if we're going to apply this to what I'm talking about, a lot of people stay in that, right? They're like, oh, if I just explain it one more time, if I explain it from this angle, if I consort myself into a pretzel, then like they'll finally understand, they'll finally be the person I need them to be, and I'll finally get my needs met. And um, that is such a recipe for disaster. It never works out that way. (laughs) And people end up staying because they're like, you know, there it's almost there it's almost there it's good enough but it's like oh this one thing is so hurtful and blah 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 and we stay we stay we stay we contort we contort we contort and obviously every relationship is going to have some compromise like not everything is going to be 100% perfect there's going to be communication there's going to be hurt feelings like I think all of that will happen but in a healthy vibe that'll be worked through and it's not going to be as hopeless let's say as this like repetition compulsion vibe. So what do I want to say about this? Why am I bringing this up? I'm bringing this up because the lesson, the message of the podcast today is if it's not fully there, throw it back. I'll say that again. If it's not fully there, throw it back. And I think this is an important thing. And the throwing it back, right, saying no to the person, to the opportunity, to the whatever, being able to say no, this isn't my vision for myself, this isn't quite there. I don't feel grounded with this person. I don't feel good with this person. I don't feel good about this house. I don't feel good about this job, like whatever. Having the faith and the trust to throw it back, like the fish that we caught back in the water, that shows that we have an abundance mindset as opposed to a scarcity mindset. If we have a scarcity mindset, it's like, oh, I'll never find a better house than this. I'll never find a better job than this. I'll never find a better person than this. So even though I'm crying every day, I might as well settle. And don't worry, you guys. That's not like a cry for help. Like, I <laughs> I have not cried in a relationship in a long time. So, like, don't worry. I'm not, like, doing a bat signal for you guys. But just as an example, right? Because, like, people have been there before. I've been there before, like, a long time ago. And I'm sure a lot of you guys listening have also been in that situation, right? I, I remember I had a contract with... Um, a nonprofit back when I was in my early 20s, uh, back actually right when I was writing Witch Body. And I remember the executive director was so mean to me and blamed me for everything that literally I was crying like every day at home, like after work, before work. I was just, I felt like shit. And actually that's probably the most I've like cried around something is like I was just crying all the time. It was like I just felt so terrible. And then I ended up quitting that job or like actually my contract was up and they wanted to renew it and I said no. And then I took like three months off to paint Witch Body and then that was kind of catapulted my career into something it wasn't before, right? So it's like that I, to use that as an example, actually, it's a good example. Like I had that abundance mindset. I hit that like point with that job. I was like, I cannot subject myself to this anymore. I'm trying and trying and trying and it isn't working. I'm not heard. I'm not seen. 
I'm intrigued in a way I don't like. I need to not renew this. I'll figure the money part out. I'll live on $2 a day. Like, I cannot. And me having that abundance mindset, taking that risk, believing in myself, that something else was on the horizon, that something else could be better, that is actually like a big reason why I have the career I have today, right? was that moment of stepping away from something that was not a fit, right? And so if you're single and dating, we can apply it to that, you know, saying no to somebody, uh, saying no to, let's say, the King of Cups reversed in a previous episode, And deciding, no, I only want an upright King of Cups. Actually, thank you. If it is looking at a million houses and, you know, a lot of them are close. But having that faith that the one for you, that perfect one, is around the corner. You just got to keep it going. And it's easy to have faith when everything is going perfect. But the true test of faith is, can we have it when things aren't working out? Because if you only have faith when things are like happy and like, you know, whatever, then you don't really have faith. You, your faith is tested when it seems like things aren't working out. And so the real challenge, the real provocation that I have to you guys today is... To continue to cultivate that abundance mindset, that faith, that belief in yourself, in the universe, that everything is working out for you, that everything will be as it is supposed to be, that you will have the life that you want, that you dream of, that is absolutely possible. When we walk away from things that aren't a fit, we make more room for the things and people that are, right? Even if it's like, oh my God, I don't know what's going to happen now. I feel hopeless. Like what's, you know, being able to move forward regardless and still be in that space of abundance, of trust, of faith. That no, this is not all there is. That yes, it can get better if we don't feel fulfilled. There is more for us out there. The world's a big place. The universe is a big place. And I like to think that when we throw back to the universe what isn't good enough for us or what doesn't meet our specifications, then we give the universe even more data, even more energy, even more information about what it is that we actually want and what it is we're actually looking for. Right? Because if we continue to accept less than what we want, the universe is going to get a little bit confused. And so we do have to stick with our boundaries, with our actual desires, and have the faith and the trust that whatever that is, is coming. It's all about abundance, it's all about faith, and it's all about trust. And it's about that full tarot card energy being willing to make that leap into the unknown, into the mystery, to embrace the mystery and to accept that and to be ready and to be optimistic, to flirt with the world, as I said in a previous episode, to trust, to be, to exist and to know that the best is coming. And I realize it sounds cheesy, but it is honestly so true. Like whenever I've said these big no's to something that was an 85% yes, something else even better has always come next. So I just want to leave you guys with that, my beautiful people. I hope you find that inspiring. I hope it is thought-provoking. And I hope it helps you shift your energy into something a little bit more abundant. Hey friends, I'm going to leave you with that. As always, you can say hello at CEO at SabrinaMscott.com. My website is, of course, Sabrina M. Scott. You can check out my tarot readings, other stuff. If you do want some coaching one-on-one, any of that stuff, you are going to have to send me an email to arrange that. So be in touch if you are interested in doing so. Uh, I do have something called Spiritual September coming up, which I'll probably talk a bit about more in another episode. But it's going to be sweet if you got any questions about that. Uh, Holla. I think actually on the website you can view it right now. SabrinaMscott.com slash sept. S-E-P-T. What else? 
uh oh yeah if you want to check out my clothing you can do so shop sabrinamscott.com anyway have a wonderful day and i'll catch you guys on the flip side bye